Welcome back to day three. Our goal today, given algebraic fractions with division, you will be able to divide, flip, factor, cancel, multiply to simplify the expression. So our main goal today is this idea here of we are going to be dividing our fractions. All right, so let's take a look at our notes. All right, so we're going to remember our motto, I will conquer fractions. All right, so here are your steps for dividing your fractions. So if we remember back in sixth grade is when we started dividing fractions, the first thing you have to do is change the sign to multiplication and flip the second fraction. All right, we're going to factor all the terms, cancel common terms, and then multiply the numerators and the denominators. So let's revisit sixth grade here. So we have a fraction times a fraction divided by a fraction. Now, we cannot divide a fraction by a fraction. So instead, what we're going to do is we change this to multiplication, and then you have to flip whatever the fraction is that comes after the division sign. So this is going to become 20 all over 8. Okay, everything else is going to stay exactly the same. Okay, so now that everything is multiplication, now we're going to follow the rules that we did when we were multiplying our fractions. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cancel anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator. So let's take a look here. Can we reduce? Well, I see 3 and 15. 3 goes into 15 five times. Let's see, we have 10 over 5. I know 5 goes into 10 twice. Let's see, I have a 2 on the bottom and a 2 on the top. Ooh, those are going to cancel. And now I have a 20 on the top and 8 on the bottom. Let's see, we can cancel or we can reduce that. Let's see, they can both be divided by 4, so 5 over 2. All right, so this whole thing is equal to the only thing left in the top is a 5. The only thing left in the bottom is a 2. So our final answer here is 5 over 2. Okay, so now let's try it with our algebraic expressions in there. So if we take a look at number 2, we see that it is division, which since it's division, that means we're going to change this to multiplication, and we are going to flip the second fraction. So our second fraction is going to be 3, and then 1 minus a. And then the, sec the first fraction stays exactly the same. Okay, so step one, change the sign to multiplication and flip the second fraction. Step two, we need to factor all of our terms. So remember, here are your rules for factoring. So we need to follow through these four. So let's take a look at our very first expression here, a squared minus one. Can we factor that? Well, is there a GCF? Nope. Can we use difference of perfect squares? Yes, we can. A squared is a perfect square, one's a perfect square, and it is subtraction. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to rewrite this with my factors. So this is going to become a plus one, a minus one, all over. Now we have to factor the denominator. So let's take a look. 2a plus 2. <clears throat> is there a GCF? Yes, there is. The GCF is 2. So we put the 2 on the outside. We're dividing both of those by 2, so we get a plus 1. Now we put our multiplication symbol, and now our second fraction. Now, can we factor a 3? Nope, it's a monomial, so it just stays 3. <clears throat> Next, can we factor 1 minus a? Well, is there a GCF? Nope. Is it DOPS? Nope, because this a is to the first power, so it's not a perfect square. And we can't use trinomial grouping because there's only two terms, which means this is cannot be factored, so we just rewrite it. Now, can we factor anything out? Is anything exactly the same on the top as it is on the bottom? We have an a plus 1, a plus 1. Okay, <clears throat> next we have an a minus 1 and a 1 minus a. Those are almost the same, but they're not exactly. But if you look carefully, they are subtraction. They are reversed, so this is our special case. So they will cancel, but we're going to have a negative 1 in the numerator. 
All right, nothing else is going to cancel, so let's go ahead. Now we're going to multiply everything that's left over in the numerators. So negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. All over, the only thing left in the denominator is a 2. So our final answer there is negative 3 all over 2. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's try now our third example. Okay, so the first thing I notice is we have a division symbol there. So the first thing we have to do is change that division symbol to multiplication, and we're going to flip the second fraction. All right, and the first fraction stays exactly the same. All right, <clears throat> now we have to look carefully to see, can we factor anything? So step one is to change to multiplication. Step two, we need to factor all of our terms. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. We're going to bring this down here. Here's my arrow. X squared. <clears throat> well, that's a monomial, so it cannot be factored, so it just stays X squared. All over. Now let's look at the denominator. X plus 2. Is there a GCF? Nope. Are they difference of perfect squares? Nope, so this is unfactorable, so it's going to stay the same, but I'm going to put parentheses around it because it is a binomial. Times, now we're going to look at the numerator here. Let's take a look. Can we factor the top there using GCF? Nope. Dops? Nope. How about trinomial? Yes, we can. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to write our two sets of parentheses. The x squared, what times what gives you x squared? Well, that would be x and x. Now we have to think of two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5, and that would be 2 and 3. All right, so now let's take a look at the denominator x squared. It is a monomial, so it is not factorable, so we just write that in the bottom. Okay, so now we go to step three. Let's cancel. Can anything cancel here? Well, let's take a look. I have x plus 2, x plus 2. Now, if I take a look, I have an x squared and an x squared. There's no pluses or minuses around them. Those are just monomials. So since they are all by themselves, they can be canceled, which that means, let's take a look. What's the only thing that we have left in the numerator? x plus 3. And is there anything left in the denominator? Nope, so that would just be a 1. And congratulations, you've just done it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look then at number 4. <clears throat> All right, so for this one, once again, I see I have that division, so we change that to multiplication. And then I need to flip the second fraction. So 21 over 10, a to the third. And the first fraction stays the same. Now, step number two is to factor all my terms, but let's take a look here. 5a squared is a monomial. 7 is a monomial. 21 is a monomial. 10a to the third is a monomial. So these are all monomials, so nothing can be factored. So all we have to do now is simply cancel. So I see I have a 7 and a 21, so I can cancel. 7 goes into 21 three times. Then 5 and a 10, I know 5 goes into 10 twice. I have a squared and a to the third, so there's two a's in the top, there's three a's in the bottom, so I can cancel out two of them and I'm left with an a in the bottom. So let's take a look. What's the only thing left in the numerator? Well, that would be a 3. What's the only thing left in the denominator? 2a. And we've got it. That is our final answer. All right, let's go down then and take a look at number five. Okay, so once again, I see we have division, so I need to change that to multiplication, and we're going to flip the second fraction. So that should be s squared minus 49 all over 20r squared. The first fraction stays exactly the same. Okay, now we have to factor. So let's go ahead, we're going to rewrite this, and we're going to factor these out. So 8r to the 4. Now there's no addition or subtraction symbols, which means this is just a monomial. It's not factorable. It stays the same. Now s minus 7 is being squared. So when you have parentheses that are squared, 
That simply just means we're going to write it out twice. Then we have a multiplication symbol in our next fraction. Now s squared minus 49, can we use GCF? Nope. Can we use dots? Sure can. So that goes two sets of parentheses. 1 plus, 1 minus, the square root of each of those, so s, s, 7, 7. Now if we look at the denominator, 20r squared, that's a monomial, so it stays the same. Now let's see, can we factor anything? I have an s minus 7 and s minus 7. I have an r to the 4 and an r squared, and they're monomial, so we can cancel those, the r squared, r to the 4, and that leaves us with r squared on the top. An 8 and a 20, both of those are divisible by 4, so we're going to get a 2 and a 5. So our final answer then, what's left over in the numerator? 2r squared, s plus 7. All over, what's left in the denominator? 5, s minus 7. And that's your final answer. All right, I'm going to have you go ahead and flip to the back. I'd like you to try number 6 on your own and then put your answer into the computer. Remember, x plus 3, we're going to put that over 1 so now you know what to do. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Were you able to flip, factor, cancel, and end up with 2 over x plus 5, which was option number 1? All right, so let's go down now and let's have you try number seven on your own. All right, let's take a look. Were you able to change it to multiplication, flip, factor, cancel, and get m plus three over 30m squared, which would be option number four. Have a great night, everyone.